Hi, I'm Glyn Jewis, welcome to episode 28. And this week I wanna show you how you can recreate the look of an explosion that you see a lot of movie posters these days where there's all kinds of dust and debris flying around that adds real drama and energy to your pictures. So we're going to create this effect by using just brushes in Photoshop, that's all it is. There's lots of ways that we can do this effect, you can use video clips, and I'm going to talk about that at the very end, but we're going to go through this one now just by using brushes. Before we get into going how to do the effect and create this illusion of an explosion, I just want to cover just a minute or two on brushes themselves. If I press B on my keyboard to come to the brushes, in the top left hand corner of my screen here I've got a couple of options. One of them where I click on this menu, this brings up all my brushes here and the one next to it brings up where I can actually change the settings of my brushes and I'll cover that in a moment. First of all though let's have a talk about the brushes. By default when you open up Photoshop and you've got your brushes in here these are the ones that are in by default. These are the ones that you'll always always have in a version of Photoshop. In the top right hand corner of this dialog box there's a little cog icon and when you click on that you'll notice there's also some different brushes in, uh, different brushes in there as well. Special effects, round brushes and all that kind of stuff. These are all loaded in. Now what you don't want to have in Photoshop is lots of brushes all in this one particular window here because the list will get bigger and bigger and bigger and it'll become harder to find the brushes. Ideally what you want is to have all these special brushes that you're going to use listed in here to find them nice and easily and nice and quickly. Now the brushes we're going to use for this particular effect, they're brushes that I've downloaded into Photoshop from websites and the great thing is those brushes are all free and I'll show you where you can get those in a moment. But one thing is, when you download brushes, it's very very easy to then install them, but once you've installed them it's also, I advise, best to organise them as well. So for example, let's just say now that I've downloaded some brushes from one of the websites I'll explain in a moment. When you've downloaded some brushes, you then go to your brushes icon here, go to that cog icon in the top right, and you'll see an option that says load brushes. When you do that, you're then asked to locate the brushes that you've downloaded. So for example, in my downloads folder here, here's a brush, uh, explosion brush set that I've downloaded. I'd then click on that and then click open. And then that will add the brushes to the bottom of this list here. So that list will get bigger and bigger and bigger. Now ideally, like I said, is you would want those brushes to be listed here so that you can find them easily. But that won't happen at this stage. What you now need to do is go to where you change all your brush settings. So we're going to click on this little uh, icon here to bring up these brush options here. In the bottom right hand corner, the middle icon, when we click on that, it brings up the preset manager. This is where we can choose swatches, gradients, styles, patterns, you name it. But we want to use brushes. And the ones that you've last loaded in, what you're going to need to do is just click on them. And if you've got more than one, you just hold down your shift key so they're all selected. Click on the last one and then you would go save set. You then call the brushes whatever you want and then locate them within Photoshop's presets. So I'm on a Mac, I'll go to Applications, Photoshop CC, I'll go to the Presets folder and choose Brushes. So once I've named the brushes, I then click Save, so all my new brushes are added in amongst all the other ones that are originally given to me in Photoshop. Then when I click Done, if I then close Photoshop and restart it, what will happen is that those brushes will then appear in the list nice down the right hand side here, so they're very, very easy to find. Okay, so first of all, then let's just quickly head over to Lightroom, because here you can see the final picture of my Iron Man, where we've got this dust and debris flying around, and that's exactly what I wanna show you now. So you can see where we've got all kinds of debris, some of it's quite sharp in focus, and some of it's quite, some of it's quite blurred. And that's what we're gonna do now, and what, basically what we're gonna do here is add depth to it, to give the impression of some debris in the distance, and some really close to the camera. So let's go back to the uh, partially retouched picture of Iron Man, 
Iron Man. I'm going to now add a blank layer so I can start laying down all this debris using those brushes. Now, talking of brushes, I'm going to press D on my keyboard first of all to set the foreground and background color here uh, to their default of black and white. I'll press B on my keyboard to go to the brushes. Now, when I choose my brushes, we can see here's my default brushes, but I have already downloaded some which are going to be like smoke effect and dust effect and particles. So I need to load those into Photoshop. So I'm going to go to this little cog icon here and we can see listed down here I've got one that's called dust particle. So I'll click on that. Dialog box comes up and says do you want to append, cancel or click OK. If I click OK what's going to do is replace the brushes, my default brushes with my dust particles. Now I also want to load in the uh, smoky kind of brushes as well. So again, I'll go to my cog icon. At the bottom here, it says explosion brushes. Click on that. Again, the dialog box comes up, but this time I'm going to click on append, or in other words, add. And when I click on that, it then adds those brushes in now. So the only ones that I've got in this little dialog box or this window here are the ones I want to use for this picture. Makes it a lot easier to work, a lot more organized. So now my brushes are loaded in, let's now make some changes to the settings. So I'm going to click on the brush settings here and basically what I'm going to do is I've got loads of options. In the bottom here we've got like a preview so you can see what effect those uh, settings are going to have on your brush. In fact, first of all, I need to choose one of these particle ones, so I'll click on that one there. And now I'm in the brush preset. So we've got at the moment it just looks, well, not nothing, anything like dust particles flying around. So I want to change the look of this preview. So first of all, then I'll go to shape dynamics and we've got an option at the top says uh, size jitter. So this is going to be debris, all different kinds of sizes. So I want the size to kind of vary as I lay down a few brush strokes. And I'll bring that up to around about, I don't know, 75-ish percent, something like that. Where it says control, I'm actually using pen pressure. So the harder or lighter I press down will have an effect on how that dust particle looks on my picture. And the only reason I can do that is because I'm using a Wacom tablet. It's an Intuos Pro tablet. Uh, angle jitter is another one I'm going to go to so that every time I lay it down it doesn't look kind of like the same repeating pattern of the brush. If I change the angle of it that's going to help me to make the dust particles look very very random. Uh, then we'll go to scattering and we can see again in the preview box when I adjust the scattering you can see that it really does change it. So it makes it actually look like an explosion going off there but I want this to be fairly gathered somewhere around about there will be fine like so, and again I'm using that pen pressure. And the last one we we'll use is transfer. I'm gonna keep opacity down to zero, because this is debris, it isn't see-through, so the opacity needs to be at zero. So with my foreground color at black, opacity is 100%, I'm gonna make my brush fairly small now, because this first of all, this first layer we're gonna add is debris that's way in the distance. So I'm just gonna paint a few strokes, might actually make it just a little bit bigger, just a few strokes right down the bottom part here. This is the dust and debris that's in the distance. So something like that. And because it's in the distance, that would be blurred. So I'm gonna to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm gonna add maybe around about 15 pixel radius. So it really does blur it out. When you look at the picture, if I turn the preview on and off, you can see that really does blur it, but that gives the impression now of because it's small of it being in the distance. So I'm gonna build this up in layers. So I'm gonna add another layer using the same brush, the same settings, but this time I'm gonna make the brush just a little bit bigger, because this is debris that's getting closer to us now. And again, I'll lay down a few strokes, pressing down pretty hard and light in places, just to vary the look of the debris, like so. Something like that's fine. And again, I'm gonna go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, but rather than 15, I'll go for something like 10, and click OK. And by doing this, adding another layer, making the brush just a little bit bigger again, this gives us the impression of adding depth into the picture. So a few more there, a few more strokes there, like so. And again, go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and rather than using 10, I'm gonna use five. Now there would be debris that's gonna be pretty close to Iron Man, so I think that one that's blurred around about five 
it's just a little bit sharper than any other debris, so it gives that impression. Now we've got blurred in the background, not so blurred, and then even less blurring, so that it kind of gives that impression of depth, like I've mentioned. But also, we need to add some more. This is probably the last layer that I would do, so I'm going to add another blank layer, but this is the debris that's going to be really close to the camera. So this would be quite large, but also quite blurred, because anything close to the camera is going to be out of focus. So again, I'm going to make the brush as big as I can, which is around about 2,500 pixels, and I'll just lay down just maybe one stroke there, something like that, because I actually need it to be bigger. So I'm going to zoom out, then I'm going to go to Edit, and Free Transform. So I get the bounding box now around that last brush stroke that I did. So now I can press down my Shift and Option key, or Shift and Alt key, and I can drag out one of these handles to really bring up the size of the debris like so. In fact, I might want it just to be a little bit bigger. So let's just bring it in around about there, like so. And then we can zoom back in, use my move tool and I can position this around. I don't want quite so much, so I might even just use my raise tool here. It doesn't worry about being uh, destructive, but I can just get rid of some of that. Let's increase the size of the raise tool and I'll get rid of some of the small ones. I only want some of the big ones to be because these are gonna be ones that are really close to the camera. So there we go, we've got those ones there. Let's just get rid of these ones at the top. There we go. So these are the big bits of debris. In fact, I'm gonna go even bigger with those. So let's just go bring those up just a little bit more, like so. Get my move tool and I'll just reposition some of them like so. Now I'm gonna to go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And now I'm gonna up the blurring a little bit more now. So let's go right up again. I reckon we can go to somewhere around about 20-ish, something like that. So that gives the impression of them being really close. Click OK. That's looking pretty good. Move them around. Yeah, that's good. Might actually get the erase tool. Let's just take them off Iron Man. Sometimes I might add them a little bit over the actual subject because obviously debris would be over them as well. But I'm just quickly showing you the idea behind how we do this. That kind of debris there. I'll press Command or Control J to duplicate it. I can put some over here. I might then go Command T and then I can actually uh, flip it horizontal so it doesn't look exactly the same as the other side. And I'll just put that down around about here, something like that. Uh, so that gives you the basic idea of how the debris is done. You can see that we've got some blurred in the background, and then the stuff and the debris that's kind of like in line with Iron Man is a little bit sharper, not completely sharp because it would be moving, but that's kind of in line with him and sharper because that's he's sharp. But then the stuff that's really close to the camera is going to be blurred out as well, and that gives us that depth rather than it just being a flat. 2D kind of look of debris, which wouldn't really work at all. So let's just maybe remove a couple more of these just to kind of tidy it all up a little bit. Let's go for that one there. Let's just remove a little bit off that one. And I might merge these last two layers here where we did the big particles. Let's just hold down my shift key so they're both together and press Command or Control E. So now they're merged. So we've got the big ones all on one layer. So now I can actually get rid of them like so. So we've just got a few of the big particles. Like most things in retouching, the idea here is less is more. Don't go overboard with it. If you just use a few of them, it's more effective than trying to add in too much. So something like that. Let's make this nice and soft. There we go, and just get rid of those there. All right, so that's the large debris. Let's put all these into a group now. So the top one's selected, hold down the Shift key, click on the bottom one, and then go to the Fly Out menu here, New Group from Layers, and we'll call that Debris. So if you've got debris, you're going to have dust. So now we're going to add some dust in. So I'm going to add a new blank layer, and I'm actually going to put this underneath the debris. Now I'm going to go to my brushes, and this is where I've got those ones that I've loaded in. And these are fantastic ones. These actual brush presets here, they were recommended to me by my friend Uli Steiger, who's an amazing digital artist based out in Germany. And actually, while we're here, let me just show you where you can get those from. If you go to this website here called Q Brushes and just type in Explosion Brushes, you'll get these ones here. These are the ones that you want, and you can download these for free. Absolutely fantastic. And I think to replicate this kind of look in a brush will take quite some time. So huge thanks the people at Q Brushes for allowing us to use these completely for free. So then let's uh, choose one of those. I'm going to go for, let's go for this one here. And once I've chosen the one I want, I'll then go to this brush uh, settings here so I can change how it looks. So we go to shape dynamics. So we've got the size jitter. Again, I'm going to use this pen pressure, angle jitter. 
Uh, let's go to scattering so we can scatter. We don't want it to be too much. Bre definitely bring down the count to down to one, actually, something like that. Scattering. And this time I am going to use opacity jitter. Something like so. That'll do fine. Uh, first of all, I'll lay down, a, I've got my black. I'm going to paint with around about 20% opacity. Bring the brush size up quite a lot. I'm just going to paint a few strokes over now because where we've got debris, we're going to have dust. So as I lift up and press down, it changes the look of the smoke or the explosion brushes like so. Might press down a little bit harder in places. There we go. So now I've laid down the dark bit. Let's just change the foreground color to white now and just add a few strokes of white. So it adds that kind of like variance in color in the smoke there. Kind of like a grayish look to it as well. And maybe a little bit over Iron Man. So if I turn that on and off, you can see the difference that's adding. Quite liking that there. A little bit of smoke and debris now. That's pretty cool. And then finally, in my uh, Iron Man picture, what I did was, you'll probably seen from one of the videos I did before over on my YouTube channel, which is this one just here, Photoshop tutorial, the uh, Photoshop tutorial, The Magic of Color Dodge. That's where I showed how you can actually create that look of all this um, bright light on him and the blueness and uh, this kind of bright orange on the side of his body, uh, his armor here. But I want to show you just very quickly how we can create this fake kind of fire effect within the smoke. Again, going back to how that tutorial was done, that was using the Color Dodge Blend Mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep using this brush. I'm now going to add a blank layer to the top of the layer stack. And I'm going to change the blend mode of this layer to something like Color Dodge. Then I'm going to go to my foreground color. Let's just bring in the dialog box now for my foreground color. Click and drag that in. And I'm going to just choose something like, like an orangish kind of color there. Let's drag that disc. Bring it over to the right hand side. So the color I'm going to use is this one here. So something like that. Click OK. And I'll take the opacity, leave it around about 20%, and I'll start painting in with that color dodge over this kind of lower part of the picture just here. Now, in some areas, I might paint just a little bit more. So I'll lift it up and paint in a few more strokes where I want it to be bright, which is right behind him. Everywhere else, I'm just painting randomly over that smoke and debris. So that's the kind of look it gives there. And then what I can also do is once I've maybe quite happy with it like that, if I duplicate that layer by pressing Command or Control J, it then starts to really add in that fire effect. So then I can carry on painting around and what have you. And that's basically how I did the effect, just by adding in the dust and debris and then this fake kind of fire effect here using that color dodge blend mode. Obviously with making the fire here, what we can also do is just come in and change the color here. So we might want to add a little bit of yellow in and then coming in with exactly the same brush and painting down. So lay in some of that yellow as well, just so you can add in a bit of variance in how the fire would look. So there you go, nice and quick, nice and simple. The only thing to remember there is to give the picture the element of depth with the explosion there. So whenever you're putting down the debris, just do it on different layers at different amounts of blur. Always remembering that debris which is close to the camera will be a lot bigger and more out of focus. That way you're gonna really give that element of almost like a 3D look to the debris. Lots of ways that you can do this explosion kind of look. Definitely check out a book by uh, Corey Barker from Kelby Training. It's called Down and Dirty Tricks for Designers. He's got a great way of adding explosion kind of looks by using a, a video clip. Because obviously now in Photoshop we can import bits of video. So you could actually check out the video on the timeline, find a bit that you like and use that in your picture as well. Very quick, very simple and really clever way of doing it. Uh, while we're here, make sure you uh, check out Q brushes to download those free explosion brushes and lots of other brushes as well that they offer. And also DeviantArt, uh, it's an endless resource of stuff that you can actually get hold of there for use in your own pictures. And while we're talking of things to do, if you haven't already, make sure you click on the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I post each and every week. And also, like I said, I do really appreciate the support. If you could let others know about this video and also my channel, that people that might like 
like to benefit from seeing all the free stuff that I post out each and every week. Now, one extra little thing is this weekly show is also now available on iTunes. So those of you who like to be able to download episodes and watch them offline on your iPhones or your iPads, head on over to the iTunes store, just type in Glyn Jewis and you'll see my photography, Photoshop and Lightroom podcast listed there as well. But hey, that's all for this week. Until next time, I'll see you soon.